get ready to meet Gold Chain Cowboy. We're catching up with Parker McCollum coming up. This episode of Connected with Kelly is sponsored by Pickers Vodka, proudly made in Nashville, Tennessee. So Pickers is a tribute to the musicians whose sounds fill the air in Music City. Pickers Vodka is distilled 11 times from non-GMO corn, and it's gluten-free. My new favorite is the Pickers Unplugged Vodka Soda. They're in cans. They are only 96 calories, zero carbs, great flavors. You need to give them a try. Visit PickersVodka.com to find out more or to order online. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Connected with Kelly. Today, we are talking with Parker McCollum. He has a brand new album out called Gold Chain Cowboy. And let me tell you, there's something for everybody on here. Some 80s rock, some singer-songwriter, major influences from people like John Mayer, which we are diving into. I got to tell you, I'm really digging it, and I think you will too. So let's get connected with Parker McCollum. All right, Parker, how are you? First of all, kudos for wearing the gold chain. That is so on brand. Oh, thanks so much. (laughs) I never take it off. Good. Give me some info about where the gold chain cowboy idea came from, because I'm looking at the set list. I'm like, there's not a song on here. Why call this album that? Yeah, I've never had a a title track album. Um, I've always tried to kind of be as creative as I could with it. But gold chain cowboy was kind of something I was um thrown around in my head actually a good while ago like a year or two ago and uh, and I kind of you know I mean I, I think if you know when I'm thinking about myself and as an artist and kind of right now trying to figure out who I am as a person and who I am as an artist um it's kind of all over the place right now and and uh which is exciting because it's you know a lot of figuring out let's do something to chase and and always trying to you know grind towards figure answering that question and when I was thinking about Gold Chain Cowboy, I was like, man, it really describes it very nicely. I have no problem going out and working cows all day, but I have no problem getting in a very nice car and go to dinner at nighttime, too. That's kind of the ultimate dream for me. And uh, But I threw it up on the Internet one day and and uh, with some other options. I think like Live Action was one possible album title, and one was Smooth, um, and the other one was Light Ranch. And, uh, and so the fans just jumped all over Gold Chain Cowboy, and I was like, all right, I guess that's it. You do have this amazing rapport with your fans. And I love the fact that you're like doing real time A-B testing. I mean, if this was if you were breaking it down business model wise, it's really smart to put this to the fans and let them give you the feedback. Have you been doing that with your music as well? Um, I haven't. I mean, not a little bit. I I don't ever. I try to never read the replies when I put maybe a little <laughs> teaser of a song on on the internet. I always want it to stay, you know, just very genuine and real in my thought process of how I put out music. But um, sometimes I will, and and I and I know which songs I'll put, you know, do a little teaser of, and people will be super hyped on. And I think the label kind of pays attention to that stuff too. So when it comes time to pick songs for the records, there's definitely a, at least one or two that we know have to be on there. You know, I want to dive into this album in just a minute, but I do want to start with just saying I looked at your schedule and it's slammed. Like you are back in full force. What was it like the first time stepping back on stage and feeling that rush of the crowd again? It was it was really good. And it's kind of cool right now because, you know, every night we're going there for the first time in a long time. And um, in some places we've never even been. And you can feel each night feels like the first night because it's the crowd's first time to see you. And uh, but the first night, the very first night for us was in Kearney, Nebraska. It was actually exactly 365 days after our last show. And um, and then and I just it was in a hockey arena. It sold out. Um, in Kearney, Nebraska, and just they absolutely brought it that night. I mean, it was it was it was hard to match their energy. Truly, I mean, they were so intense, and uh, uh, it felt very good. When you have a, a sold out, you know, crowd looking at you, what are you hoping to give them? Like, is it leveling you up to the next level when you're feeling all of that intensity on you? Yeah, I mean, just some nights are different, right? I mean, it's it's just like anything else. I mean, you know, you think about Kobe Bryant had bad games. LeBron James has bad games. You're going to have bad shows. You're maybe not a bad show, but just where you're not, maybe not as on your game as you were the night before as you have been. 
Um, and so I just, I feed off of the crowd a lot and, uh, I always just at least at the very least try to match their energy and if not set the tone and, um, the, the rowdier they are, the in the, the rowdier I feel on stage. So it's, it, you kind of feed off of them. How do you sneak in new music? Because I think that that's always the trick, right? You're going out and you've got these people in their high intensity and they, they're familiar with the stuff that you've already put out. And, you know, they want to hear the hits. I mean, I, I've talked to, you know, Dirks and, and Darius and they're like, we got to play the hits. I mean, uh, Darius can never not play Wagon Wheel when he goes out. So you know you're going to play those, but then you've got all this new music. So how do you decide when to play a new song and how to get that in there? And then what the, what's the feedback like? Um, you know, it's kind of funny. Some we, there's a there's a song called "Couple Broken Hearts" ago that it's not on any album. It probably will never come out, but I love the track when we recorded it, and so I put it in the show, and um, and we played all. And I'll preface the song, but hey, this is a brand new song, and we just started like that. And you can tell people are kind of like looking at us the, the while I and mean, of course we have to play the hits but um there's like some bootleg youtube videos i guess of us playing it and so people know all the words now it's really funny i'm like this song will never be released probably it's not released now but never, it will never come out um and i think it's a part they look forward to in the show now so it's uh i don't ever really think about it you know if 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 we cut something in the studio or if i write something and i'm just all about it i'll put it in the set um, cause I know we have enough songs that are going to carry us to the show and, uh, we can, we, I think by now we can have a couple that maybe aren't just big hits for us in the set. I love the fact that you can do that. That's awesome. Do you ever do a cover? If there was a cover, what would you throw in? We, we play lately. We've been doing Dwight Yoakam's version of suspicious minds, um, off of that, okay. off that album. And, and just, uh, that's like the best we don't do i don't know if we do it any justice but i love to sing it. and it's really funny I, we always play it and then afterwards i'm like if she's she doesn't know that song she's probably too young for you um because <laughs> all the all the kids in the crowd are just like you know i mean i'll get messages afterwards like dude i love your new songs suspicious minds and i'm like man i wish <laughs> that's awesome she's probably too young for you um talk to me about dallas when i was listening to to this that was one of the first that really jumped out at me uh first of all who's on that track with you who's singing with you daniel bradbury is singing on that track with me which i yeah. love her i think she's just an unreal talent one of the best voices in town and uh she just killed it man i love this song i love your voices together give me some insight on dallas where did it come from Dallas, it's kind of funny. We were in a rehearsal. This is a while ago. I had that song for a while. And um, the band and I were in a rehearsal in Austin. Um, and we had taken a break. And uh, all the, most of the band had gone to the bathroom. And it was me and my keys player, Charlie, still sitting in there. And and I looked at him. I was just joking around. I said, watch, I'll write a hit song right now and just make something up. And uh, and he he kind of said jokingly, he was like, man, please don't write another slow, another slow song, because all my songs are just slow ballad songs. He's like, don't write another slow one. And uh, I just looked at him and I, and I sang the chorus of Dallas, just kind of freestyled it out how it is. And he was like, no way you just did that. And uh, and, so, and I remember being like, man, that's actually kind of cool. Uh, and sat on it for a while and then uh, and had written that first verse, I think a couple of days later, and then sat on it for a while. And I, we were going to cut uh, some songs in the studio about a year ago. And, um, and I knew I had you know, wanted to cut that song, but it wasn't finished. And I texted my buddy, Randy Rogers. And um, I was like, Hey man, write a second verse of this real quick and the bridge and send it back to me. And like 30, he just happened to be with our buddy Wade Bowen and they wrote it together and uh, texted it back to me. And like 10 minutes later, we cut the song and now it's on the record. That's incredible. That never happens. That never happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, also want to hear more about heart like mine, because to me, when I hear you doing a singer songwriter type song, like I'm feeling your influences from Todd Snyder, from all of these amazing singer songwriters that I know that you love so much. And I, that one to me was like a hallmark. Wow. This is a Parker McCollum, like singer songwriter, heartfelt song. You really feel comfortable in those songs, don't you? Um, I think so. I just really enjoy singing them. Um, my favorite songs of all time are sad, slow country songs. And uh, and so anytime I'm I almost have to make myself just so the entire album won't be, you know, slow, sad country songs. Um, I, I kind of have to make myself I'm like, man, let's just, you know, if you got to drink a bunch of caffeine or whatever today, we're going to write something that's moving because uh, I've I've just got to 
a huge pile of slow, sad country songs I've never cut. And uh, so when it comes time, like we were putting this record together, I just listened to a few of them and I was like, I think those are good enough for the record. Give me more insight on why Indiana. Yeah, that's like, uh, you know, of any song I've ever written, that's the one that I'm like, I have no idea how that song even came about and it really it just when we cut it it felt so good sounded so good I was like it's got to be on the album but we were playing in somewhere in South Carolina um like two or three years ago and uh, I had been drinking a little bit on stage and and really having a good time and maybe a little too much and got off this after the show I was on the bus and um picked up the guitar and I just for some reason had this melody in my head and was singing why Indiana and uh and I just remember being like, I don't know what that is or what that means, but that's really, it sounds really cool. I need to remember that. And I was right with my buddy, Randy Montana in town a couple weeks later. And I was like, dude, what is this? And he just kind of started asking me questions. He's like, well, what do you think it is? And I was just answering and we were writing song, we were writing lines off of whatever I was answering. And just kind of the things that I was seeing when I would close my eyes and think about, or, you know, sing that chorus. And um, all of a sudden we had the song written and I never thought anything of it. Um, until we were going to cut and it was actually Brian Wright at the label who was like man you gotta just give this a try just see how it comes out um, and then when it came out I was like wow that's pretty dope <laughs> I thought there was some big tie there I'm from Indiana so immediately I was like oh I gotta hear this and we're playing in Indiana I think this weekend for the first time ever we've never played in Indiana so, and we, and the band doesn't know it. I might have to text them this evening, but hey, we're playing this in Indiana. You got to, you got to, that's going to be fantastic. You know, when I listen to this album, it is interesting because, and, and I love the fact that you say that you have all these different influences and that you love all these different sounds, because when I hear it, I'm like, okay, oh my gosh, this, this reminds me like of a nineties country song. Oh, this sounds super fresh and new. That's a singer songwriter song. It's so different. Each piece is a little bit different. And the one that I felt like I felt like falling apart was really different for this album as well. So what is the story with falling apart? And and why did you feel like that one needs to be on this? Falling apart. Um, so I was Randy Rogers had called me. Uh, he was in town in Nashville. And and he said, hey, I want to get Randall Lambert, John Randall, who's my producer and us two and get in a room see what we can come up with. And I'd never done a four person ride before. So I was like, well, let's not plan it as a ride. Let's just go and hang out and then maybe we write a song. And, uh, um, and so I, I didn't want to go on empty handed. And the night before I was, I kind of messed around on the guitar, trying to find something, come up with something. And I um, started singing, uh, what if I just wanted someone else? And which I thought was kind of cool. It's a different, you know, kind of concept for, you know, the POV of a song. And, um, I took it in the next day. Miranda actually was like, that's a little too mean. What if it's uh, maybe you are better with someone else? And I was like, yeah, okay. That's, that's also a cool take. So we ended up chasing that and we write the song and, and it was cool when we wrote it. And then um, we were cutting the next day in the studio and I was, I went to my producer, John Randall's house that evening um, to kind of do some pre-production, go over some songs, figure some stuff out. And he had, he was listening to 38 special when I walked in that night and, uh, and I, when we were listening to a couple of their songs and I was like, man, why don't people, why does no one sound like this anymore? I mean, this is unreal. Like these, these songs, these records are just, I mean, they just insane. And uh, I thought it was really cool wondering why no one cut songs like that anymore. And I was like, let's take falling apart and let's try to channel some of that 38 special and that eighties rock vibe. And, and I don't have anything like that. And I really, right. I really wanted to show on this record that I can do all of it I, I just like immediately let people know like you cannot pigeonhole me into anything any certain type of anything like it's just music it's just songs you know if it, if I feel if it feels good and I think it's a good song I'll cut it and play it um and so it was really nice to have something like that on the record that just isn't a slow sad country song kind of a little banger I love it I love it um in looking at things because you brought up 38 special what is your go-to country throwback song like if you're just hanging out and you're like I know listen I had to do like a list of my favorite 90s country songs for a publication that I write for and it took me two dates and then I had to narrow it down so now I'm asking everybody else like what is your go-to throwback country song if I was gonna pick one right now off the top of the dome it would have to be just to see you smile by Tim McGraw probably 
that song's so good so good what is it about it that hits you in the right spot it's a line in that song that i really really wish i had written and it's uh um um i told you that i was happy for you and given the chance i'd lie again i mean that just oh uh, it's so that's so good that's so yeah. good ah uh, that's so good too. i love tim mcgraw that's a great one yeah. what were you listening to growing up like what was playing around the house what did your mom and dad love around the house my mom loved the judds um she loved like uh sammy kershaw and uh, eddie rabbit and john conley um uh, the judge is really the most like I can just and I think it's because she had one CD she played for like an entire summer one time when I was like 10 or 11 I think to the point where I'd like cry because she was playing the judge so much and I was like I don't want to hear this anymore um but really I mean the the man in our house is George Strait there was no higher yeah. no bigger no better and then my mom was a huge Keith Whitley fan um so a lot of Keith Whitley but George was George was king around our house Okay, so I'm going to throw this out to you because you said the Judds. Um, Sam Hunt, uh, several years ago, he just started doing covers, and he did he covered one of the Judd songs, and people went nuts. So because you've got that, you know, if you're ever looking for a fun cover, I challenge you to do a Judd song because I think you'd crush it. Oh, thank you. No, I mean, I, like uh, Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. I, I listened to that song all the time anytime it comes on the radio my little cousin Ryder and I'll send a picture if one of us hears it on the radio because just I mean we had a great our grandparents are phenomenal people very lucky the way we grew up and uh and my grandpa granddad passed away a few years ago so that song resonates with us big time but um I'm I've been a judge fan since I was in diapers what's it like on your dream board what are you hoping the next few years are going to be like for you man oh I don't know I mean you know, I've been thinking about it a long time and thinking about it every single day, just, you know, always asking, you know, do I have what it takes to make it? And a lot of people have a couple number ones and that's great and all, um, or, you know, one number one or, or have a good, a couple of years where they have a good run in country music. And uh, I just, I would really like to do it for a long time and, and kind of leave a mark on country music. I think that'd be really cool. If there's an artist out there that you would be able to collaborate with, who is top of the list there? Uh, I mean, it'd be hard for me to pick anybody besides George Strait, John Mayer, Willie Nelson, and Dolly Parton. I mean, if it was any four, I'd probably retire if I did one of those. I love that you got John Mayer in the middle of that sandwich because I, 100%, that's like my Mount Rushmore right there. Yeah, he's he's on my Mount Rushmore for sure, just in music as in, in general. I mean, just absolutely as as I can't imagine an artist being any better at their craft than he is. I can't wait for Saw Brock. Oh, it's, it's, it's like a couple of days, right? It comes out right. on the like 14th or something. Yeah. 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 Not not that I'm counting, but yeah, it's yeah. Exciting. Yeah, me neither. When you're heading out on the road, what are your must-haves? Like, if you guys are on the bus and everybody's stopping, you're stopping at a Flying J somewhere and you're going in, what are the three things or a couple things that you have to grab? Um, I'm probably always going to try at some point. I mean, I eat oatmeal on the bus. Like, instant oatmeal is my thing on the bus. I eat it all the time with peanut butter and banana. It's a great little easy thing you can keep stocked up. It doesn't, doesn't expire very quickly. Um, but, I, I mean – I don't know. It's kind of, I feel like sometimes I never eat on the road just because we're so busy, always going, going, going. Um, but I always have to have my oatmeal. Good to know. You're super healthy. I like it. Uh, sometimes. And Parker, congratulations on this album. And thank you so much for taking the time to catch up with this. Good luck on the road. I know you got lots of dates. Cool. Thanks so much, Kelly. Thanks for having me on. Brand new album, everybody, from Parker McCollum. He's out on the road right now. You can find him out with Dirk Bentley. Also, make sure that you check out this new album and let me know your favorite song below. While you're down there, hit the subscribe button and the bell. That way you'll be notified when we've got new episodes that come out each and every week. Do me a favor. Tell a friend about our channel. We want a big, big family right here on Connected with Kelly. Until next time, make sure that you're staying connected with all the people and things you love the most. 